I don't give a flying f what he thinks. I'm an internet god. My name is Joe Cronin. We're listening to The Joe Cronin Show. Hello, hello everybody there. Right there on The Joe Cronin Show. The hardcore legend Mick Foley. You're watching The Joe Cronin Show with Joe Cronin. Personality, insight, and insanity. Wrestling talk with attitude. This is my dear loyal lieutenant, Brother Cronin. He's a good man. How about this? If you're going to call the show, grow a sack. If I offend you, fuck you. What's up, wrestling fans? Before State of the WWE starts, I quickly want to let you know that tonight, Kenny Bolin's Bolin Alley podcast is going to be live on the Joe Cronin Show right here. And we're going to have special guest, former WWE superstar, Rico. It's going to be an epic show, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, live, right here on the Joe Cronin Show on YouTube. It'll be the Kenny Bolin podcast. Plus, we'll be on Facebook with it as well on the Kenny Bolin Facebook page. Also want to let you know WWE is having a flash sale today for the next 11 hours, uh, 35% off certain things. It's incredible. The link for that is in the description box down below. Go click the link to go to the website to get the savings and to give me credit. Now let's start State of the WWE episode 89 with Dave Rose and Connor from OK Fabe. Also shout out to Jack J for the support on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin show. Thank you, Jack, for supporting with five bucks a month. You are now entered in the giveaway. There are two big giveaways coming and a third one to be announced for anybody who's supporting with $10 or more on Patreon. Uh, so we'll be giving that away, letting people know who won uh, by the 27th of April. And I hope you guys share the photos with everybody when you get your items. Uh, check it out. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin show. Let's go. What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to State of the WWE, episode 89. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful episode today because I've got about 40 minutes to record it. We've got Connor from OK Fabe. You can find him on YouTube at youtube.com slash OK Faber. Um, you must go over there and subscribe to him because he's very nice, and once in a while he shows his peen on camera. Uh, he doesn't do that, but I wish he well, did. Well, only for the select few. Yeah, he's actually really nice. Patreons. Hey, Patreons. Uh, p Patreons? Yeah. <laughs> You want me to plug the patrons? No, I'm saying that that's only available for his patreons. Oh, mm. for his patrons, yeah. Actually, well, we, I try to yeah. keep up, and this is Devious well, Dave Rose. All right, yeah, let's Devious get right on it. down to it. Well, episode eighty nine. Tying oh, in, yeah. Tying in with that, I just re I'm releasing a ten minute little video that's off air, that's kind of behind the scenes. You guys can listen to. It's going to be up for patrons and uh, on vid.me slash Joe Cron Show, I believe. Uh, but yeah, Connor. Uh, funny enough, you know, I met uh, before we get into this real quick. Uh, Connor, I met. Uh, I shook Bill Apter's hand in Florida. Oh, I meant to, you know what? I meant to mention that to you before you left. I'm like, shit, that's right. He's going to WrestleCon. I forgot. After goes to those as well too. And I meant to say, go say hi to him for me. I Did walked... he smell like a funeral home. You know what? <laughs> I got to be honest. Listen, I love Bill what? After. I, I love Bill After, but my God, no, he's great. He's absolutely great. If you, if you've seen this stuff, I think it was like late '80s, early '90s, yeah, where he's, he's right. actually doing some wrestling in the ring. Yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't know that. That, that was great stuff. I, I told him, uh, I did tell him, like, I, I was reading you, you know, in the 90s, like, as a kid and stuff, and so that was cool, and he, he was like, oh, when I said, because I said, hey, Bill, and everything, and then I was like, it's, I'm Joe Cronin, and he was like, oh, Joe, yes, I, and the, I don't, so I don't know if he really knew who I was, or if he was just being nice, but. Oh, he knows, he knows oh, okay. who you are, I've mentioned, I've mentioned to you a couple of times. Okay. Big question, right. guys, are we ever going to see him in the Hall of Fame? I hope so. Yeah, He I definitely think he will. deserves it. Um, Do it now. Uh, you know what? Why? Yeah. Why? Why not in 2018? I definitely. Could, I. I want to see him in there for sure, just for his contributions yeah. in the pro. You know, the magazines and everything. Um, he really he, has contributed a lot. And when are we gonna see Raj Giri in there? <laughs> 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 the, the oh the the the, be, the best after story though that he told me was he used to um you know he's close with Heyman. Yeah, and when he when Heyman was running ECW, he invited him one time to do photography. I think he mentioned this in the book, and uh, he said that he was have there, there was a match with Terry Funk, and Funk had a frying pan. He goes get out of the way after, and he didn't get out of the way, and he just, he whacked him as hard as he could <laughs> right in the head with the fucking frying oh, pan, knocked shit. him out, knocked his so ass that's what's out wrong with cold. Him. That's awesome. 
That is awesome. Like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I'm imagining a cast iron skillet just being plunged into his head. That's terrible. <laughs> he said that according to the people who witnessed it, it sounded like a cartoon gong, like a dong. Oh, wow. Well, that's actually good. You don't want it to sound like it's nothing. That's actually probably... But you got really, sell it, Bill. No, because, I mean, if, if he hits you with a frying pan and it's one of those thick, horrible ones, you would just hear... And he'd be hurt. Oh, you mean like the stainless steel? Like yeah. The, like, um, actually, Joe yeah, makes yeah, a good yeah. point. He's no. talking from an, an actual mathematical, physical point of view where if uh, the material does have the give, um, it will reverberate. But if it's so dense and thick that you hear nothing, well, yeah. you know, might as well call a funeral. It, it's like the bedpan yeah. with Stone Cold. When he gets hit with that bedpan, it's like that thing made such a noise. It's like, you know, it probably didn't hurt that much. Plus, he kind of hit him with it so that he kept going with it, and it sliced off the top of his head in a way. I don't know. Impressive, it, it, Joe. You like Most that? Most impressive. I did a lot of backyard wrestling, dude. Some cookie sheets work, <laughs> some don't. Um, but no, Bill, in all seriousness, I love Bill. So much respect for Bill. And I wish that I had been a little bit more professional and perhaps I would have worked with him. But I couldn't help myself but be myself and be a cocksucker. Uh, and he did kind of, I have never shook a hand of a person that I thought like could have been a corpse. But I'll tell you what, uh, <laughs> it, it, I, like I, my dad died when he was like f almost 50. And I got when I was shaking Bill's hand, I was like, "Oh my God, this is like when I like I I could smell like I kissed my father in the in the coffin, and he was cold and everything. Like it was just like I, the last time I had flashbacks to my dad in the coffin. It was weird, uh, but let's hope Bill stays around for another thirty years and goes in the Hall of Fame. I could, I definitely think he will. If not if not next year, maybe the year after, because yeah. a lot of people have been wanting him in there for a while. Yeah, he was nice to me too. Like he could have been like Joe, what the fuck. Uh. You know? No, he's al he's always a sweetheart to everybody. He I should have taken is. a photo with him and stuff, and I just couldn't. I don't know. I didn't do it like because I felt weird, so I didn't do it. But I I I wish I got a little video or a photo. I should have gotten a photo with him. Well, um, if you're get if you're going next, are you going to New Orleans next year? I don't know if I'll do that again. I, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I, I might drive down this time. That, I'll tell you what. That plane flight was like fucking agony, but. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, and then people are like, "Oh, how are you going to work somewhere?" Well, if I was, if I had a job where I was flying, I'd get, I'd figure it out. I'd be all right. But um, right. I don't know. I just wasn't used to it. So, but whatever. And we we're talking about that on the wrestlers, how they got to fly everywhere. How the fuck do they do that? Like, we're tired from SmackDown the other day. We just drove there from, you know, around here. But, dude, I was dead. And um, I got to say, like, I finally made it to you. Like, I was walking away from my SmackDown seat, and it was like. You would have thought I was the fucking king of England. The security guard next to me was like, "Who the fuck are you?" Because you know, like people kept coming up to us, <laughs> like, "Hey, hey, hey, Joe." You, you had killer seats. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. That was probably are the, were those the best seats you've ever had? Mm, well, no, because I've been on camera in the front row, so. Uh, oh, I don't right. find it itself. coincidental at all that you were just outside the front camera <laughs> yeah. view. Yeah, it is. I, uh, I don't find that coincidental at all. It wasn't coincident. Mm. I don't believe it was coincidental. It also was not coincidental that I was looking at the announce table. So that mm. was very interesting stuff there. You were uh, tested, and I think you uh, responded quite well considering, was it maybe – 20 feet away from you you had the guy that you interviewed last night who was yeah. holding up the sign that specifically was referring to jbl being a bully i was a very good boy a bully. i was a very bro. good boy i was a very good boy in my seats so i was very good i even i even marked out for tozawa and everything i made it look great i was like wow oh you did those photos actually look uh, quite good everyone else is sitting around there's idiots looking at their phone and you're like yeah. come on what's going on yeah i felt <laughs> I still say it, it sounds very, like Tazawa was quacking. Passed the first test. I was trying to just make sure I, you know, I was on. I knew I was on TV, and I knew that everybody was bored, like looking around like idiots, bored. And I was like, "Well, dude, there was a guy, couple guys behind me that were selling it pretty well." But yeah, I was like, "You know what? I gotta, I gotta sell this deal." You know, Leah was like, "Sit you know down. What, what are I you doing?" I just had the most beautiful vision in my head that you drop kick Rosenberg in the head <laughs> while he's speaking to JBL, <laughs> and then you take his place there at the table. And you begin your career with the WWE. But they don't show it on camera. My God, that was, that was almost divine. I think, but, I think some sort of spirit just touched me. Hallelujah, brother. But, 
But imagine they don't show that on camera and then they just cut back to the commercial. We're back from break. Hey, Joe. Hey, I don't know what that was about. We just can they just keep rolling on? <laughs> I'd be I would be out of that place in like two seconds because you can, can you see, can you hear what Rosenberg Rosenberg is like rolled over like a fucking dog with a someone's holding a piece of meat in the air. Come on, people. He, we chose Roman Reigns. Yeah, we chose Roman Reigns. Listen, I got to be honest. I know that some hate for Roman Reigns is ridiculous. I know the WWE sees a lot of the fans that boo him is like ridiculous. And I know there's like of whatever but for rosenberg to say that we all these people mm. chose roman reigns and now they're mad all of a sudden and by the way this this goes back to so long ago uh you have a two-year sample of people booing roman reigns rosenberg the fact is the truth lies in the middle there's a core of wwe fans and newer fans and younger fans and women who love roman reigns and he sells really well and he's like to them he's like the top number one guy but to right. the other half of the fans, they hate Roman and they boo him and they don't like him. Uh, so the spin from WWE is, oh, well, you're paying to see him still or to boo him, so he's still hot. But the spin from the people is he needs to be, like, fired or he needs to go away or, you know, he's ruining it. And, and, and both cases are wrong. But for Rosenberg to just pick that one side and say that, you know, he's fucking delusional. Or, or he's lying. I mean, there's only two yeah. things, delusional or lying. I, I, I didn't like – I mean, nobody who's like, you know, what we do as far as like the YouTubing or the podcasting <laughs> who is indifferent like that has ever said anything close to that. Like, no, no, we, you know, we, we, we – like they never really like picked the side. Like granted, I, I think you're absolutely right in terms of people being in the middle more than anything else. I mean, hell, I was at 32 and – uh that crowd was like a sea of booze, but there were still yeah. there were still people that were cheering him. So well, and there's it, also still merchandise yeah. sales. So, right, exactly. So, I, so to, to just only blatantly say like, no, no, we 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 chose him. Like, who the hell are you speaking for? Like, I don't think everyone chose Roman. I think yeah. it was more split, like you said. And and if and, and by the way, if you're talking about the Royal Rumble, if he's talking about us cheering Roman at the Rumble, the people cheering Roman at the Rumble were were only cheering him because they were so mad at Batista and the Daniel Bryan thing. So you force the hand of people, similar to when he spears Stephanie and everyone cheers. That's not authentic. It's and, and I know that, that you know somebody in the WWE would say, well, you don't know how wrestling works, then, dude, because a reaction is a reaction. That's true. A reaction is a reaction, but still the feelings change immediately. It doesn't mean that. Oh, you caught. We caught you. You cheered for that, so you must really like him. We caught you. It's not like that. It's not. It's if, if Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out one night and cuts a promo on someone, and the people start cheering for him. Then he comes out another night and they start cheering for him again. Then he does something else. They're cheering for him even more. He stuns Vince McMahon. They cheer for him even more. You know that is a solid workload of they are cheering for him now. Roman Reigns being cheered for was only cheered for in the Shield, and after that things changed. And they cheered for him in the Rumble because he was one of the newer guys. And they didn't want to see Batista win, but they wanted Daniel Bryan. So they wanted Daniel Bryan. They settled for cheering for Roman because they were mad at Batista. And then Batista wins and everyone boos. And I think if Roman Reigns had won that Rumble, people would have booed afterwards. They were just cheering at the time. So they chose Daniel Bryan. So for Rosenberg to sit there and say that, oh, we chose, you chose Reigns. I was there in the crowd. I heard it. Like you're then you're a fucking you're delusional, like you, you 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 like honestly like he's delusional or wrong or he was working for WWE. I mean I can't blame him, but maybe I'd start you know, to say the same thing. He's, he's towing the party line. That's the thing. It it becomes very clear to them. It's just like these are the areas you can cover. These are the areas you're going to totally ignore, despite the fact that it's punching you in the face, and you're going to continue to push whatever we tell you it's not delusion it's just business but that's the problem <laughs> there's no morality in business well, from an anymore. outside perspective it looks like delusion i, I get well, your point uh, no i can understand where it's coming from but the, yeah. the fact is why did they bring on rosenberg and uh, not sam or sam roberts whatever the hell is afro faces called <laughs> no yeah it's, <laughs> afro it's I because call Shawn Michaels. no but here's the, the this is the thing that people really need to understand is why did they bring these individuals in they're trying to dismiss the legitimacy of what they've uh, derisively called the IWP, like you know, whatever the fuck they call it these days, the well, Internet the, Wrestling Community. And they're not even the, they're, they're not the part Internet, of it. Though. YouTube, whatever the hell you want to call it, that they're basically trying to say, look, guys, we got someone on your side, but they're you know they're 
promoting Roman Reigns. So that Not means really. you guys should be promoting Roman Reigns and supporting him. But that's wrong and because me, but that's wrong because Rosenberg has a radio show and Sam Roberts has a radio show on satellite. Uh, granted, do do we do a whole lot more views over here? Smarks. Sometimes true. They're yes. smarks. That's the mm. point. They're smarks, and they have influence with their radio stations, which means I, that if they're the ones that are going on, like the WWE pre-show saying yeah. Roman Reigns good, anybody yeah. else bad, it means that they're using the the WWE is trying to use their influence, Sam Roberts right. and the other guy, um, to the point to sort of direct the narrative to say, you smarks were wrong. You guys chose Roman Reigns. They're, they're essentially manipulating wanted. the platform. They're, they're manipulating but, their platform that they have. But I'm trying to say that radio, I don't – everybody that I know in the in like IWC, YWC and stuff doesn't, doesn't really listen to those two guys. Uh, they listen to – People like us, or, or you know, somebody like a show like us. Yes, I mean, but we're... that's the thing. They're presenting it to the public, and the majority of the the viewers that they're trying to direct it to are the casuals. Yeah. So they say, "Hey, casuals, look, these are the the nerds on the internet that are always talking shit about us." <laughs> And they're even agreeing with the fact that Roman Reigns is great. So don't think yeah. that you know those boos you're hearing are for Roman Reigns. They're saying boo earns. Yeah, so that's I mean, what uh... they're fucking doing. Yeah, it seems like it. It's definitely weird. And he's sitting at that table. In the first episode, he was way more critical, and he sort of got attacked. Hey, I'm not going to dismiss the fact, too, that Corey Graves uh, was critical about Shane McMahon and AJ's match. And I can't tell if that's, like, fabricated or if he knew it. But he does He does get awkward in the off the table, bring it to the table. And um, he's kind of like, yeah, Shane talked to me about that and everything. And, he, and, that, and honestly, he looked kind of like I did after Bubba Ray Dudley chewed me out. So uh, he might have gotten spoken to about that. But I respect, uh, you know, there was a couple things Corey Graves said during the other one that I was like, man, th this guy is full of crap, you know, and uh, Connor, if you got to take care of something, don't worry about it. Um, but that's yeah. right. I just I forgot to meet the mic. Sorry. Oh, okay. My kid's always doing that in the background. But uh, the issue upstairs. I think that we're raising with, particularly with Rosenberg, is the fact that it's insulting for him to tell us. Yeah, that was what insulting. What we think, and yeah, I think that was the big one. That was real bad. What he said the other day was very like, how can you look at yourself in the mirror now after saying that? Because that was a clear, that was like a slurp job he did the other day. I mean, I, I know that it must be tough looking across the, the table to JBL. I mean, JBL, who, who knows, based on what we know, maybe JBL said to him, hey, kid, listen, if you don't say this, I'm going to fuck you later. <laughs> I mean, in like, in I mean, that, that, ugh, I mean, that, that, that could be turning either way. I don't know. <laughs> Here's another way of, of going around it. Why don't you say... <laughs> Hey, guess what, people? Roman Reigns merchandise alone sold X amount this month. Yeah, exactly. Do you think those boos even matter to him? Yeah. The fact is, the crowd has spoken, and just because your yells are louder than you know those that are buying his merchandise doesn't mean a thing. Yeah. He's you know if he came out with that attitude, yeah. with those uh, statistics. That would be a, a different way of approaching things, and it would say, okay, look, I've got my opinion, you've got yours, here are the statistics, well, deal with them the way you no, want. here's what would happen. That would be a lot more neutral than the way he approached yeah. it, which is, oh, you know, we chose it. I'm telling you what you what you decided. Yeah, if you if, if you look at his, his reactions and his responses and the way he – uh, forms and you know uh, forms his opinion on the shows from the first episode of Bring It to the Table to the third. It's almost night and day in a lot of regards. Like yeah. I, I think like Somebody they got, got a taste. Him. I think they got a taste of him and or or what or his opinion. Like yeah, we need that. We kind of we need to nip this in the bud a little bit. Yeah, because he has completely gone 180. So and it's very noticeable. If he was if he was completely dead honest and giving that opinion that statement like I just said, uh, I, I would want to watch that show more. What that did was when I heard him say that, that made me sort of want to not watch. However, if I was a casual fan, I, I would stop watching Bring It to the Table because it's 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 a uh, tainted it's completely fabricated However, yeah because they advertised it as like you know a behind the scenes like bring you know a yeah. shoot kind of um per, you know like a shoot area where these guys can just kind of shoot on their opinions right and now you don't even it doesn't feel like you're getting that anymore yeah it doesn't, uh, you, what, what, right you feel like you're just getting a I just, I just crazy, gave you the truth. manufactured shoot i just gave you the truth there's the internet crowd that will jump on anything and 
many people really don't like Reigns. That's a fact. They just don't like. Okay, him. let's sign the petition. Fuck it. I mean, dude, did I mean did Rosenberg hear Monday Night Raw when they? I know that I know that last two weeks ago we we're supposed to boo who we cheer and cheer who we boo, but I now know. it's the week after that, and everyone was was cheering Roman being assaulted by Braun Strowman. So, not really <laughs> sure, you know, if that I'm correct or not, uh, based on whoever wrote that line to be said on SmackDown and Raw. But let's tell it like it is. Bring it to the table should be bring it to the table. But it's more like um, we brought it to the table for you. I mean, that's what it's like. What I told you is the, <laughs> it, what, what I said is the fact. Some people hate Roman Reigns. Uh, half the crowd hates Roman Reigns. And there's a portion of the crowd that, that loves Roman Reigns. He makes a lot of money. And to the 40% of the crowd, I'm going to go with 40% of the crowd. I'm going to say 40% of the crowd loves Roman Reigns. 40% of the WWE audience loves Roman Reigns. To that 40%, he is number one. He is the number one guy. They love him. Then maybe 20% are still Cena people. And then the rest of the crowd hates Roman Reigns, and they all disperse into liking different people at the top. One guy might like AJ Styles the most. One guy might like Kevin Owens the most. One guy might like this guy the most. That's why nobody else is, like, overtaking Reigns' spot. Because technically, he is the number one guy because those 40% of the WWE audience watching on TV around the world and wherever fuck else love Roman Reigns and they absolutely are 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 decided that they're his they're the number one guy where the other 40% of the crowd have different number ones so nobody can beat the number one guy Roman because there's so many different likes everywhere else if Shinsuke became the number one guy for everybody else then you'd be talking but you see what I mean I mean that's where I'm at that's how I can see this and that's why if I was WWE I could see them being like no Roman is the guy now because 40% love him to death, and he's beating out everybody with merchandise, and it's unanimous from that group. And, you know, the rest of them hate him and give him a big reaction. So even even with the other half of the crowd actually hating him or whatever, the fact that they give him such a reaction vindicates WWE with what they're saying. So I get that he could be the number one guy and what WWE's opinion is. But what what is wrong is that Rosenberg tried to say we made him the guy or something in that moment or whatever the fuck he was trying to say. I get what he was saying, but it was wrong and yeah. uh, dishonest to me. He was trying to make the point that like Roman was the most popular guy of the Shield, and I I definitely do not agree with that. Not one. on my show, he wasn't. I I would think Dean was the most popular one out of all three yes. of them, but I mean that's that that's just my opinion. No, but, Connor, you nailed uh, it on my show. You can anybody from WWE, anybody from anywhere can go back on my show in 2013, uh, whatever it was, 2014, 13. Go back and listen. We all talked about this. We fought about who the number one guy was, and most people picked Dean Ambrose. Because he was the most well-rounded, he could speak the best. We knew the John Moxley promos, and Seth was more quiet. I picked Seth as my right. as, as the number one guy I because picked Seth is mine too. And I even tweeted uh, Rosenberg about this. It's like I chose Seth. Don't don't presume to start to speak to me about this, and it's disingenuous uh, and presumptuous of you to say these sorts of things. Yeah, and and we chose yeah, Seth from his wrestling ability, I, I believe, think, at the time. Right. I, I was going to say the only reason I thought Dean was probably favored out of the three was because to your point joe uh he talked probably i think the most yeah out of all three of them and he wrestles so between, the wwe like, his, style right between right between his wild thing and plus remember he had um he had some momentum with that whole um i don't know if this was before or after nxt i know he will see but remember whole him with mick foley thing was supposed yeah, to happen right 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 yeah, so there's a lot of buzz about him before that, and then you know the Shield thing, and da da da, and then just kaboom. So I think that was the reason that Dean was very popular. But um, you know, I think so somebody said this before, and I think they mentioned it about Cena back in the day. Was it doesn't matter if you're getting cheered or you're getting booed. The only thing that Vince cares about is that you're getting a reaction, and that's right. what I think to your point, like nails it on the head. Yeah, because you talk about like. 40% 40, 40 of the crowd thinking Roman's number one, and then the other 60% crowd reacting to him booing or whatever. So, I mean, to them it's a hit. So, and I, I get that. You know, they've mission accomplished in a way. Um, but don't be delusional about the results of the mission, I guess, is what I'd be upset about. And um, Don't, like, don't don't bring, like, insulting information to, like, I, I think yeah. a lot of people, in this, yeah. like, they look down upon some wrestling fans, like, no, 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 this is how it is. Like, like 
We're, well, we're not that dumb. Come I don't want to insult the people that love. See, I'm not insulting the people that love Roman. I'm telling you flat out, there is a large amount of the audience that loves Roman, and he is the number one guy. I'm, I'm literally telling you, I'm not some smarky guy going, everybody hates him. Everybody fucking boos him. Don't you listen right. every Monday? Don't you listen to the booze from WWE? Nobody likes him. Get this guy. Turn him heel. You know, I mean, and listen, I do think they should turn him heel, but I'm not ranting and raving that everybody hates him because that's not true. I'm telling you the fair shit. 40%. He's the number one guy. That's a big fucking number. But there's also a big number that does hate him and boo him, and you can't ignore the boos either. So the truth is in the middle, and the smarky internet is shitting on him like those don't exist, and the WWE is treating him like he's the number one god or something. So the truth is in the middle as always with these things. Um, we've completely strayed from where we were supposed to start this show, but I've, <laughs> but I've had a lot of fun talking about this. Um, yeah, the fact totally. Is... We didn't get nothing covered <laughs> that we were planning on. Hey, uh, since we're on the Roman subject real quick, so I, you guys... <laughs> probably heard about the freaking um the braun Strowman petition right yes Changed yeah. loved it so so now there's a roman petition that's probably gonna get nice. more votes nice. it's I, it, it's got to be a farce obviously <laughs> not compared to the, yeah I, I i hold on i'm gonna see if i can find it because somebody just sent it to me like right before we hopped on but like someone's like yeah in response to the braun Strowman petition someone made a Get uh, WWE must fire Roman petition. Oh my god! Um, now you I thought was you watch this. Hilarious. The Roman one will be outdone. I guarantee you, the Roman one has more signatures. I in would the be end, surprised. It probably will. It, not it, now, here it is. But... It, <laughs> here it is. It says quote: Roman Reigns is a lame ass wannabe wrestler. I don't get why WWE keep taunting us fans with <laughs> with make Roman look strong thing. We don't like Roman Reigns. Fans all around the world boo their guts out. Still, WWE pushed him and booked him to defeat the legend himself, the Undertaker. Now the fans are more pissed than ever. But Roman Reigns is still there, acting like he deserves this. This BS needs to be stopped. Sincerely, <laughs> a wrestling fan. As of this writing, the petition has seventeen hundred supporters. How much is the uh, Strowman one up to still? I know it was at fifteen hundred. I, I have to look that up. Um, it was at fifteen hundred, but it took days to get there. So this yeah, is, this one this one's been up for less than twenty four hours. What a war! This is great. See, this is what the WWE wants. Like this is gold for them. I mean, I'm know, not finished with you yet. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> I thought. I swear to God, in that segment, I thought we were either going to see Braun Strowman pop up as the driver. Or he was gonna show up as the doctor at the ER. He no, dude. He should have. He should have like. He should have. You know what ha should have happened? There should have been a camera in the ambulance or something for some reason, which is ridiculous. Which goes goes against what I made, what I criticized SmackDown for when they put Shane through a window. But it'd be funny if like, like footsteps running up to the thing, and then like the window smashes in, and he drags the EMT out the window, <laughs> and then he dra he goes like from a fucking horror movie. He, yeah, exactly. He closes, slams the door shut, and he goes, "I'm not." I'm not done yet, you know. And then, like, he drives the fucking ambulance into the water or into a fucking brick building. <laughs> <laughs> Just crashes the. I mean, like, I'm it's like watching a GTA movie. Is, I mean, like, what they did was was pretty cool, uh, and I loved it in a way. Uh, even though it was a little cheesy, but I, I liked it a lot. But if they had gone that far afterwards, I really would have—I would have blown up. I would have marked out like like that would have been hilarious. If like if just to take it that extreme, I mean that was that would have been up there for where it is right now. Like it was pretty good. And I'm gonna watch it again. But if they had done what I just said and gone the extra mile. I would have watched that over and over again like the fucking grocery store fight with Booker T and Stone Cold. I mean, that would have been that close to that for me because that's too funny. Like, I'm not done! Yeah. So I, I, I actually went back and – and some of the – if you want some really entertaining stuff, go and read some of the comments on the WWE YouTube channel like when they post like these clips. The one of Strowman getting – you know, tossing the, uh, the ambulance. Yeah. I could not stop laughing. There's the, the top <laughs> comment right now says, Legends say – he still kicked out at two. <laughs> That's <laughs> there's, awesome. There's a bunch of these funny <laughs> ones. Like, Braun, eat a Snickers. You're not you when you eat when you're hungry. <laughs> there are so many jokes, dude, that it's unbelievable. Um, YouTube kills off monetization for wrestling videos? What? Yeah, there was something going around about this. I think I saw JD even tweeting about this, and I think somebody else, too. Apparently, wrestling... Wrestling related videos. Uh, oh, it was Beyond Wrestling. Uh, Beyond Wrestling, which is, uh, you know, Joe, the local yeah. promotion up near us. Yeah. Apparently, a bunch of their m videos, which are mostly wrestling matches, yeah. got demonetized. And apparently, according to new YouTube standards, wrestling matches 
are not considered uh, PG friendly or monetiz what, uh, monet I can't even pronounce the word monetizable or mon monetizable. Oh, monetizable. Yeah. Monetizable. Thank you. I couldn't think of the way how to pronounce that wow. the right way. Monetizable. Well, what I can tell you is one day when I was browsing around, like looking at the, I was going on incognito mode, looking at my own videos, and nothing was monetizing. I was going on other people's WWE videos, nothing was monetized except for WWE. Um, yeah. And then I would click on like Toys R Us, and every every Toys video, every one of those videos had video, had ads. Um, I'd click on Star Wars, everything had ads. I went back to searching like wrestling rumors, site, everything. No, nobody's nobody's ads are playing. Yeah, so, my, mine was like restricted mode. Nothing shows up on mine. So that just tells you guys that if anybody out there loves Connor's channel or loves my channel or anybody's, uh, it is important. Um, believe it or not, unfortunately, in this fucking time to support with a dollar a month or something on Patreon, which sucks because this platform is supposed to be like we deliver stuff to you and that's it. Now we have to fucking sit here and constantly plug fucking Patreon and tell people to help or whatever. If you like us, make sure you help us. I mean, we've already we've already had a big casualty to this whole fucking thing at Justin Bailey. He deleted his whole channel. He's gone. Um, and that's because of this ad shit, basically, and the what's been going on. Um I'm, I'm working with Justin to try to get his content back, maybe on my channel or somewhere where he can get something. I don't know. Maybe vid, vid.me or something like that. But, uh, yeah, so there you go. It's important, guys, because uh, it shouldn't be up to you, but apparently it is now because YouTube's censoring everybody that fucking... Er, YouTube's taking away your shit is what they're doing. Uh, they're fucking us over. They're fucking you over. And uh, they're fucking everybody over unless they make a channel about going to Toys R Us and brushing a doll's hair. Um, so that shit will, will all be okay. And if you're a corporation, you'll be all right, too. WWE will be all right. WWE could probably upload a video where a guy gets fucking bloodied, uh, which they wouldn't, but if they did that, it'd probably get ads in front of it. But we won't get ads in front of ours, so Merry Christmas. Uh, it's even worse, too, Connor, because it's like when they demonetize a video, it's okay because you're like, okay, well, I know that that's demonetized. What's worse is when ads don't sync up with your video whatsoever because of its content. You don't even know that. So that's the scary part. Well, you know what's weird? I, I mean, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't get enough ad revenue anyway to make any sort of. Yeah. I, I've never made a profit off YouTube. Yeah, at this ever. point, yeah, Just, I can imagine. Despite seeing all the ads on my stuff, I've never made. I've never gotten a check from Google in the like four plus years I've been on YouTube. Uh, so this is just a way to kind of, you know, I just started getting a little tiny bit, and then it gets taken away, kind of like what you were yeah. saying in one of your videos. So it sucks. Um, but as far as WWE stuff, I think, no pun intended, they have their own network. Like, obviously, not, I'm not talking, like, obviously the fucking 999. Yeah. I mean, they have their own monetized, yeah. uh, you know, program that, like, YouTubers have for themselves. Yeah, they have their own uh, MCN thing, yeah. Yes. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that, yeah. that's a way around it is to get M to go to an MCN and make sure that they have ads that are going to deliver on your, on your content. Uh, I mean... But, you know, JD is with a company that's great, and I know them very well. I've never signed with them, but I've always been close with them. But even JD has had his, you know what I mean, has seen this dip happen. So, you know, even if you're with an MCN, it's still going to screw you up because it, JD's drop was, you know, drastic. I won't say what it is because it's not up to me to say that. But uh, mine is, it's just about as drastic as mine is, but just with him being a lot more successful. So... You know, his he dropped down to making what I was making, and I dropped down to making what I was making three years ago. You know, so but anyway, it's going up a little bit. I noticed uh, yesterday, um, but the best way to support us again is Patreon.com. Connor has one, uh, I have one, and um, and hopefully uh, we'll make a we'll we'll make a, even more money, and then uh, Dave Dave Rose will make a bunch of money, right, Dave? <laughs> Because right now they ain't making nice. anything. I mean, it's always nice to to be able to do a podcast that people enjoy and uh, make some money from it. But unfortunately, YouTube has made it next to impossible, essentially shooting off their own foot for the fact that they're just trying to acquiesce to social justice warriors and this virtue signaling. And as you've made it clear to me, Joe, they don't have any ads to play on YouTube to put on these videos that are on there. But there are so many other services that are sprouting up that are willing to do that and are capable of doing that. And it just goes to show who really is capable of running a business and who isn't. Well, there you go. Um, I want to, I'm trying to figure out a way to direct this going forward now. Um, what, what, what I want to tell you guys is, uh, you know what, let's just finish it off. Fuck it, let's do it right now. 
I was going to split this up into two parts, but let's get into the Super Show stuff, the shakeup, everything that happened on Monday night and Tuesday night uh, with about 10 or 15 minutes left. Uh, I think we can do it. Um, I, I'm okay pretty much with what happened. I mean, you know, I'm... I'm fine with it just because, like, Dean going to Raw. Dean was stale on SmackDown. He seemed to maybe rub people the wrong way over there. I don't know what happened. Uh, He gets put on Raw so he can maybe revitalize himself. Uh, Maybe that IC title can actually become something again because putting it on a pre-show at WrestleMania was was like a burial. Uh, Dolph, who else changed? New Day's coming to SmackDown. I think they have been on Raw so long that it will be nice to see them you know, on SmackDown, that's a good change for them. That I think they switched right as they were going to get a little annoying or stale on Raw. So, I think most of the switches made sense for the most part. Um, I, I kind of, I mean, f- for me, generally, I think with the exception of maybe one or two switches, all of them seem to make sense in my eyes. I mean, you know, bigger picture. Was there anything you didn't like, Dave? Or... Oh, he's muted. Dave, you muted? Oh fuck! I did it again. <laughs> um, um, I, I I just didn't like Wyatt going. That was weird. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, I'll just make it brief. Um, I'm not really pleased. I'm not satisfied with what I saw both on Raw and SmackDown with how they shuffled the groups. More importantly, I was actually quite uh, bothered by the fact that there was many announcements made on SmackDown as to who was going to be moved, yeah. including New Day, Rusev, Lana. But they weren't there. Yeah. This wasn't announced on Raw. And more importantly, they took the audience involvement away from the whole process. Surprises are good. not going to deny that. But what bothered me was the fact that the audience was only there to respond to the after effects. Oh, Apollo Crews, who didn't even show up on the show, is now on Raw. Uh, maybe you want to announce that. Maybe you want to sort of build some fanfare towards that. Again, the whole process seemed very detached. As a viewer, I you was wanna... not satisfied with what I was given. Do you want me to know why? However, many people have made some good points. Trust in the writing staff of SmackDown because despite the fact that they've been continually given the lesser hand, they've been able to make it spectacular. And I do count my blessings. We still have AJ Styles there. We have Nakamura. Yeah. And we have Owens, which is cool. Yeah. We have um, Sami Zayn, which is uh, okay, I guess. Really? Uh, He's a good wrestler, I think. He, no, that's the thing. It's not that... I'm denying that he's a good wrestler. Is that I've seen the whole Owens and Zayn thing a lot. Yeah. And I think that the guy could be doing better if they were disconnected and that they weren't doing this whole fight for everything. But that's that's another issue. I'm not taking away from his talent because he's clearly talented. I'm just worried about then him becoming a Then we've got fucking – um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, fuck your buddy, 10, number 10. Um, oh, uh, Ty Dillinger. Yeah. Ty Dillinger. Yeah. Really That's amazing, good. okay? Um, SmackDown, despite my reservations for how they handled this shakeup, I think still has the more talented writers, and that is where I think is the key in regards to where the quality is going to come from. So despite my misgivings, I will have to say that I have more faith in SmackDown to be able to do a good job with the the, the, the card they've been handed than Raw. Not only do they have uh, seemingly the better week-to-week show – but they also only have the two hours, so it makes it even easier. But they're but they're also good most of those two hours. Whoa, were... whoa, whoa! Hold on, but you, you have to be genuine with this here as I well. Am. And I tweeted you and JD about this last week about covering this on Out of Nowhere. But you've got more women on, or at least you did until you know the shakeup on SmackDown, where they can dedicate them more time and give us a better match. Yeah on a two-hour show than they can do on a three-hour show. Well, that alone, I think, is an art. Like, that shoots everything down in regards to which one is the superior brand, oh, yeah. in my opinion. The, the SmackDown is able to do more with less time. Their time management is unbelievable. The SmackDown's time management oh, is like the New England Patriots' uh, 
time management compared to the, like the Vikings 2010 or whatever the hell. Uh, nobody gets that reference, but whatever. Uh, the point is, <laughs> the point is that like the. By the way, I believe that Lana debuting the way she did and all that stuff. You know, you just complained about that. I really honestly give SmackDown the benefit of the doubt that that one of the things is to build anticipation for the week later, but also. Um, because of time. So I think that you couldn't just have everybody come out and to build, you know, I guess you could have come out and waved instead of that video playing, but I think they wanted to build anticipation towards the stories later on. So that was stuff to build off of. So all the ammunition wasn't emptied in one night. So I sort of right. think that was their thinking. I get what you're saying, though, because I was mad too, but I, that's what their thinking is. Also with Apollo Crews um, on, on Monday Night Raw, uh, not that I agree with it, and I know why we're all mad about that, but I will. I'm going to take the devil's advocate, and I'm going to pretend I'm WWE. Apollo Cruz was announced that way. Number one, to build excitement about the whole thing. Number two, to generate buzz on the website. You know, every once in a while, they they have a quota, so to speak, where they want to generate buzz on WWE.com and generate social media buzz. Um, and they always do it like a few hours or the day of Monday Night Raw. Uh, that was calculatedly done by WWE. It doesn't matter if he was in a storyline, showing up, not showing up. They didn't care. They were just like, who can we announce to generate this buzz now without wasting someone that's going to be there? So that was part of it. They used him I, for no, the No, I buzz. understand where they're coming from, and I understand why they did things. The way I see it is just that it's a bitter pill for me to swallow for both brands. One of those pills is going to be a lot easier to deal with because it's not a suppository, and I'm talking about the SmackDown one because that one <laughs> is going to be uh, at least – with the confidence that I have in the writing staff, much more enjoyable than what we've been getting with Raw. How do you go from one week from making, you know, all of us mark out and enjoy ourselves immensely from a show that's probably been the greatest in at least two years to the excuse that we were given last week or this week? What do you mean? What was the excuse? I don't get it. Oh, no, no. What I'm saying is that, okay, last week, right, last Monday. Yeah. Raw was spectacular. It was the best one that we had oh, okay. seen at least in two years, if not a decade. Well, it was the night of this first past movie. Monday. Okay, basically four days ago, we got a Raw that was a joke. Yeah, I mean, um, Raw was not. Uh, yeah, don't, I, I don't agree. No, I agree. Raw was not good. I mean, the only thing I can. Yeah, you're right. It was a completely opposite show. My it, concern it, is the dis discrepancy. How do you go from fucking the most amazing show that people in recent time have had with Raw? To a show that goes not only back to what was going on in the previous weeks, that was you probably even more inferior. I'll tell you why right That's now. That's my concern. I'll tell you right now why I believe this. I believe it's because Raw has trouble writing anything for themselves. They really do. Uh, in my opinion, it, it, they are awful at it. Um, they basically are only good if they get Goldberg to show up or Brock Lesnar to show up or whatever else. They were only good because the crowd was so hot. They knew what they could Triple do. H. Yeah. Well, the crowd assisted. If there was no crowd participation, Roman can't cut that promo thing he did. There's no crowd cheering at the beginning. There's no crowd booing Roman like maniacs. So that whole segment's out the window. So there's 20, to, what, 15 minutes that's gone. Um, and, and, it, and it falls in line after that with everybody debuting and how good the crowd was. It came down to the crowd and, and WWE knowing what to do. I give them credit for it. I mean, they knew exactly what they were doing with Roman and all that stuff. They knew what they were doing at WrestleMania. They knew if Roman beats Undertaker, he was going to develop more heel heat and stuff like that. It's not like they don't know what they know exactly what they're doing. But for writing a week-to-week -week show, for some reason, Raw is just awful. Braun Strowman in, in Roman's segment last week was amazing. In fact, it was maybe the best segment of the whole week of anything. But everything else that happened was piss poor. Uh, yet SmackDown did a better job of doing a whole show. Like the SmackDown as a whole to me was better than Raw. But that moment yeah. on Raw was better than anything else. But still, that's rare. So I give them that. But um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if they can fix it. But what they're doing on Raw, it's it's almost hilarious. Like if they don't get help, or they don't bring in a name, or they don't do something like that, it's 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 like lazy. I don't know if it's lazy writing or lazy decision making. If somebody's actually sitting there thinking about this stuff really, really hard on Raw, I feel bad that I'm saying this, but I mean, what, what, what the, what are we seeing? I mean, how can SmackDown be so good? And and, and I and I know that people would say, well, SmackDown's writing for you guys, and Raw is writing for the other people. Well, no, I don't believe that because Raw. Right, Raw has. If you watch my reviews, I've given example after example of how things just don't um, make sense. If that was the case, then they wouldn't have moved the people that they did to SmackDown, like New Day. So shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, Connor, what's up? 
No, just that, that's pretty much what the argument I was going to say was like, I was generally thinking that maybe that was the reasoning is that Raw was writing more generally to a broader audience, but you're right. If you really think about <clears throat> who they moved over from Raw to SmackDown, it just completely kills that, that argument. I, I Among mean, other things, I gotta I gotta be honest, and I know this is this is harsh, but um, whatever's been going on Raw the last year, it makes me think that whoever's over there doesn't give a shit about what they're doing. Uh, the only thing I can think of is uh, I know there was an NXT writer that came up from and went to SmackDown, right? I don't think one of them went to Raw. No, he went to I'm not, SmackDown. I'm not saying it's only just because of one freaking writer. No, it's but not. But I'm saying maybe there was a there's some sort of influence it's on SmackDown that's with the overall flow of the show. It's that's the, the only mentality. thing I can possibly. It, think of. Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's the mentality. This is a this is a known fact based on everything on the internet. Uh, SmackDown writes their own deal. I'm sure Vince McMahon and Triple H and some other people are there and watch over it and are coordinating with it. But for the most part, they're given. You know, you are your own show. Go for it. You know what I mean? And and so that so SmackDown is on its own in a sense, and they have less to answer for and less to be cared about. So I feel like, you know, you you get less opposition from Vince or from other people, you know, because well, it's your show. You want to try that? Fine, go for it. You know what I mean? And we're talking about the writer that came up from NXT. We're talking about other writers. We're talking about the Road Dog. These guys are all delivering on SmackDown and on Raw. I have no idea what's going on. And by the way, sometimes when SmackDown hasn't made a goddamn lick of sense a few times, when SmackDown has made zero sense, it chances are it's because it's got something to do with Raw. Like uh, when The Undertaker showed up and said this was still his... uh, Sorry, God. No, I was just going to say The Undertaker showed up and said this was his yard or his show or whatever the hell he said. Then all of a sudden he's on Raw. I mean, you think SmackDown was starting to write so that they could just have The Undertaker do that? No, they were starting to set up The Undertaker to be there. And then all of a sudden we're told, hey, Undertaker is going to be doing this now, not that. So all of a sudden SmackDown didn't make sense for a second. Well, that wasn't because of SmackDown. That was because of people in control of Raw because SmackDown sort of has to go where Raw goes. My Mm. biggest suspicion about why Raw is the way it is is probably because well, I should say is because of this reason and if you understand the markets this might be the more probable answer but it seems to be that again being a public company many people are again in the stock market aren't looking about the product themselves but just to make a profit and again being a public company the WWE is going to try to make themselves appear as profitable as possible you're not going to have in potential investors look into all the different brands that WWE is putting out they want to look at the flagship again it's like any car company for example you know for example uh, Chevrolet I think it's che- or GM I believe owns yeah. uh, Cadillac Right now, again, if you want to put out, you know, say, well, look at our best product, you're going to point to the Cadillac, but they've got other products. They've got, you know, regular like mainstream, you know, sedans and and sporty coups and, you know, all the, the those different types of different brands. But it's under the same company. The way I see raw is that they're uh, basically saying, oh, you want to invest in our company? Look into this one. Look at the merchandise, uh, merchandise sales that are produced because of this particular brand. Mm-hmm. Ratings. And that should make your judgment as to your investment as opposed to mm. saying you want to look at all the different brands and make an assessment as to whether or not this is valuable as a investment, but more so as someone that actually values the product. And I think, to me at least, that's what's defining such a precedence being put on Raw. What do you guys think about that? Now, that makes sense. You mean like it's basically under – I guess the best way I would also use it, like it's under a, a, a more microscope, it's more micromanaged in some regards. Well, it also, also makes sense that it's the most corporate show because it's the most, right. that is your number one staple. It's the one with the most spotlight on. Right, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. see, in my, no, that makes sense. But my, and listen, and you know, in a way you can relate it to MTV. Remember when MTV released uh, MTV2 and MTV3 and, and MTV had been so commercialized yes. MTV became so commercialized that it wasn't playing music anymore because now it was about the ratings and the name and all that corporate stuff. So they created MTV2 and MTV3, and um, those played the the music videos that you, you were used to on MTV. So, yeah, it's very similar to that. Raw was awesome at a time, and it was all about a certain wrestling, but now it's become the more corporate show. 
So, hey, listen, if you want a little more of this stuff, it's over on SmackDown. And if you really want to get into it, we got this thing called NXT. So I get Let's that. Let's be but, honest. Do you think an investor mm. who says, hmm, I've got $10,000 to invest. I'm going to watch, you know, Live 205. I'm going to watch. I'm going to subscribe to the network to see all the different shows they're offering there. I'm going to watch SmackDown and I'm going to watch Raw. You know how many hours that is? Yeah. I mean, again, <laughs> Too many for us already. Exactly, and we're the fans. So again, it just seems to my to be for my reasoning at least, and I'm open to discuss this. Is that it? Just seems to be like Job put it. It's more of the corporate show, the one that presents the idea of this is why we're so popular and and so successful. Look at these statistics, not the product. Forget the product. Look at the statistics that are generated from this product, and make your investment decision based off that. Yeah, and the other thing I'll say, too, is the argument on the other side could be, well, if that's the most watched thing, the most amazing thing, wouldn't you want to make it the best show and make a storyline that didn't make a fucking lick of sense? You know, because Complacency. It's complacency fully and utterly, and I've said this before, like is that the fact that when you've got a, a guaranteed revenues uh, income from, for example, the, the um, network – or the merchandise sales, or um, you know the potential negotiations you have with multiple different uh, news channels, or whatever your you, all those media deals you're making, you've got guaranteed income, which means that you're in a complacent position. There's no competition out there for WWE. There's no reason for them to ensure that their product is the best out there because nobody is challenging them but you know financially is- or. Uh, you know, uh, via a business competition. But when you put SmackDown and NXT in, char- you put other people in charge of NXT and SmackDown. To them, there is competition because they want to show they're as good or better as Raw, as the, as the main hub. So I think that is why you're seeing SmackDown be so consistent and do so well, and NXT do so well. Now NXT's fallen off a little bit because of you know talent moving so quickly and changing, and maybe perhaps some other issues. Uh, no, uh, but okay. You're again. It's Chevrolet that owns uh, Chevrolet GMC that owns Cadillac. When you when when that company is approached and says, "Well, what's your best product?" Well, take a look at our Cadillac. It's top of the line. It's luxury. And then they ask, "Well, what about your your Buick or your your GMC or your you know your your Chevrolet?" Oh no, th- don't worry about those. Those are, those are good. They're profitable. But no, look at our star candidate here. Look at yeah. the Cadillac. It's so so luxurious. That's the way I see the example that you're you're presenting, which is the and difference honestly, between Raw and SmackDown. And honestly, you don't need to sell Raw like that. Advertisers just look at, I want to be on Raw. Look at those numbers. I want to be on that No, show. you shouldn't have to sell that to us like as fans. Oh. But that's the way that I've interpreted the way that they've managed their business as to how they're trying to attract investors. And you see such a big dichotomy between when they were a private company to now, when they're basically publicly um, viable, and more importantly, when for the sm- slightest or smallest thing, or sometimes you know an important thing like uh, Big Show ripping down the Russian flag, there's some severe economic repercussions for a publicly traded company. So yeah. they're going to try to play the safe, no matter what the case. Well, uh, we're really on a time yeah. at this point, but I. I... I uh, had a lot of fun talking to you guys. I want to say shout-out to Mitch Brandenburg, who just upped his Patreon on my Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show from $5 to $7. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, And thank you to everybody else who's gone over there. Become a $5 member of the Cronin Club, Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Uh, Also, go check out Connor uh, from OKFabe. His channel is YouTube.com slash OKFaber. And he's got a Patreon, too, so go help him over there. Um... And uh, the other thing, shit, I wanted to mention something. Oh, yeah, the WWE, don't forget, the WWE has a flash sale today. It's uh, April 13th, 2017. 12-hour flash sale on the WWE site. In the description box down below is my link. If you use it and you buy anything, I will get credit. Uh, There's also a coupon code when you get to the site um, via that link. And it's a big-time flash sale. So if you're going to buy something on WWE.com, today is the day to do it. Big flash sale up to 35% off. Um... And shit, I think that's everything. Uh, I've also listed in the description box down below my times for uploading. My, I mean, I'm going to be uploading at different times. Also today, want to let you know if you're done listening to this, 6 p.m. Eastern time. It's only two hours from now, so maybe you missed this announcement. I'll, I'll make a video about it. 
Uh, Kenny Bolin in the in the Bolin uh, Bolin Alley podcast is back. Season eleven, episode two. We had Jim Cornette a couple weeks back. Now today we will have former WWE superstar Rico. Uh, Rico is going to join us. We know that he's been through some emergency stuff and healthcare situation. Had a GoFundMe. Chris Jericho donated to it. Uh, and if anybody's out there, we'll find out about his situation tonight and what we can do to help him. Uh, if he still needs that help, I'm not sure. Uh, but it'll be good. We'll have Rico on here. Um, we're not going to have Billy and Chuck, I don't believe. But Rico will be here with Kenny Bullen, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you're listening to this now... Uh, and it's days after this has already gone up, then you can go back and listen to it. Know that that's available on my channel. Uh, also, you can listen to the Bowling Alley podcast on iTunes. Just make sure you're starting at season 11. There's a separate one from his previous uh, time with a different host. Now he's with me. Um, and you want to look for that podcast. There's only one episode up right now, so there should be two uh, by tomorrow. Uh, Connor, anything else uh, you wanted to add, dude? No, just always uh, always a pleasure working with uh, you and Dave. Always fun. Thanks for having me on. Thank you guys uh, for coming on. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, at Devious Dave Rose on Twitter. Um, what what's your Twitter, Con- Connor? Is it at OKFabe? Okay, yeah, that one is at OKFabe. Okay, at OKFabe okay, on Twitter. His YouTube is youtube.com slash OKFaber. And uh, I'm at, at Joe Cronin JCS. Thanks for listening to State of the WWE episode 89. Please leave your comments down below with what you guys thought about everything we listened, we said. And if you listen to this entire thing, I want you to write hashtag donkey balls in the comment section. Uh, thank you guys for a million views. Um, uh, we're doing a million views a month. It's pretty freaking incredible. Everything is going way up on the channel and the podcast everywhere. And thank you to everybody that said hi to me the other day. And uh, again, I, I am also on the platform vid.me slash Joe Cronin Show. So vid.me slash Joe Cronin Show. You can watch special videos on that channel that I'll only be releasing soon for them. i got a partnership with them. You guys can subscribe for special videos on there uh, for five bucks a month. And you can tip on the videos. If you think the videos are cool enough, you can tip on there. That's cool. Uh, and I will also have a special Patreon video going out as well. So that's that will only be for patrons. So a to- bunch of different ways. Nothing's changing on YouTube, but I'm just doing extra content with other people, obviously, to get partnerships and deals because of YouTube uh, screwing with our money. But that's okay. More content for everybody if you guys want. Thanks for listening to State of the WWE. I'm Joe Cronin, uh, Devious Day Rose, OK Fabe. Goodbye. <laughs>